So uh, thank you everyone uh, for your patience for being here. Good evening everyone. So thank you uh, each and every one of you for being present uh, here with us today. I hope everyone is good. Uh, welcome to the Hello World series. The team members of uh, Developer Student Clubs of SRM ISC Ramapuram have stepped up to give their valuable insights and advice on the wide range of technical domains. So many of you are uh, maybe from first year and some people may be from second year. So you may be confused by seeing people around you have already chosen their path and going ahead of you, right? This is the perfect time for you to choose your domain and work hard. Uh, I about a quote which says, one day or day one. If we all are waiting for that one day, it will never come to us. So we have to make this moment as day one. So and start working hard. Uh, many of your seniors are here. To so let's get started. So uh, first of all, I want to let you know about what is GRC and what do we do. So let me show you. Student clubs or university based community groups for students who are interested in Google's developer technologies. So by joining a DRC, students grow their knowledge in a peer to peer learning environment and build solutions for local business for their community. So domains we are going to focus on AI, ML, web development, Android or iOS, research and project building, cloud, uh, competitive programming, AR or VR game development, entrepreneurship. Then uh, what kind of uh, share sessions we do we take? So uh, the first one is hands-on workshop. Then the next one is solution challenge, expert tech talks, Google AI Explore ML. Uh, cloud study gems, boot camps, and finally engaging challenges. Uh, let me introduce Aravind uh, from third year. He is our lead of SRM Ramapuram. He'll tell you more about the solution challenge, which, uh, which has recently started and is uh, going on till now. Hey all. Solution challenge is an annual event by Google Developer Student Clubs all over the globe. Uh, all teams build solutions for social problems faced. Students who are interested in building solutions can join nearby DSE and build solutions for the problems faced in their society. You must know at least one Google. You must use at least one Google technologies for the like Flutter, TensorFlow, Firebase to build solution. You need to have clear and well-defined problem statement, list out all the limitations and build feasible solution. You need to identify the best solution based on the user needs and try to give a, a good interface and new technology implemented in the solution. Perks of participating in solution challenge. 10 winning team across the world will receive a trip to Sunnyvale, California to demo their solution to the Googlers. They will be featured on Google channels. A certificate from developer student clubs noting your contribution and achievements will be given. Solution Challenge 2021. So in Solution Challenge 2021, uh, the mission is to solve one or more goals of United Nations Sustainable Development using Google technologies. There are seven goals listed. If you want to know more about the Solution Challenge, you can watch this session by our team members in YouTube. I will drop the link in the chat box. Over to Priyanka. Priyanka will now handle the UAUX session. Uh, so is my voice or why is I have... Yes, audible. 
Yeah, sure. So uh, thank you, Aravan, uh, for explaining about the solution challenge. So uh, let me start with my domain. It is UI and UX. And we will uh, we will be presenting uh, me and Krishnan. Krishnan is from third year, and I'm uh, from second year. So uh, by seeing this picture, you have got an idea of what is UI and UX. Many designs over here, and mostly based on the and technical report. So let me move on to the topics to be covered today. So what is UI? What is UX? And examples for UI and UX types, difference between UI and UX, the tools used for that, and resources and job opportunities. So what is UI? So the user interface is a point of human computer display, uh, human co computer interaction and communication in a device. So this can include a uh, display screens, keyboards, a mouse, and appearance of a desktop. So uh, it can include, it is also the way through which a user interacts with an application or a website. So uh, the UI designers decide what the application is going to look like. They have to choose the color schemes, button shapes, the width of lines, and the fonts used for the text. So it is the main job for UI des designers. So the UI designers create the look and feel of an application's user interface. So uh, we'll move on to, uh, we can see some pictures here. So uh, we basically, when we use our phone or Windows or laptop, anything, it is completely based on UI design. This logo, this icon, UI design. So well, then what is UX? UX is user experience. User experience refers to any interaction a user has with a product or service. So UX design considers each and every element that shapes this experience, how it makes the user feel, or how easy it is for the user to accomplish their task. So what is the role of UX designers here? So the UX designers are also concerned with an application user interface, but uh, people get confused about the difference between the UX sometimes. So the UI designers are uh, tasked with deciding how the user interface will look like, but the UX designers are in determining how the user interface operates, like uh, how the user feels comfortable with the app, uh, how the user feels while using it. So this is uh, the main difference between the UI and UX. So let me move on to the next slide. You can uh, see some pictures here. So the UX design is mainly based on interface, navigation, structuring, design, and extra user research and all. So it's completely based on user experience. So uh, let me give some examples for this UI. So the first one is Dribble Squad. So the Dribble Squad is like, uh, you can see the picture right over here, this black one. This is a website. This are uh, like, they make unique uh, UI designs here. Traditionally taking the form of rectangle, you can see like, yeah, in the end, you can see the rectangular modules filled with the images and text. So, uh, Drupal user uh, calls the creative and innovative projects uploaded to the site by designers every day, allowing the user to get a colorful and aesthetically harmonious overview. Design is an indigenous op uh, approach for featuring work and capturing users' attention. So, the next one is that the MailChimp's usability. So the MailChimp usability is also a website. It is used for like creating mm -hmm. newsletter and all. So it is also a website. You can see that while Googling. So uh, the MailChimp, like, uh, it, it uses a refresh intuitive website uh, that makes uh, newsletter management stress-free and straightforward. So since its recent uh, design, the web UI is clean, flat, and primarily featuring unhelpful, visually pleasing uh, for new users, it is also uh, like very easy to use for new users. So the MailChimp has incorporated a supply animated pointer over here to indicate that. So you are uh, many of you have box like you have seen every time we are opening it will show different colors. Now it's showing me a uh, violet, but when we are opening it will automatically change. It will uh, change according to the user's environment or the user's wish. So the thing is that the response and the Dropbox mainly uses the responsive colors here. So the response, what is responsive colors? 
Responsive colors is it acts according to the user's wish and user's environment. It acts according to that. So the household brands of progress a progressively this responsive color. color. So uh, the Dropbox website is a perfect example of how responsive design is a fantastic way to keep users engaged as they navigate your website. So the fourth one you uh, you may all know that. Pinterest waterfall effect. When we search for anything, the first name that comes to the uh, website is that the Pinterest one. So the Pinterest one, you everyone might have seen. It is like a waterfall one. Here, like uh, when I search this UI animation, it gives like a waterfall effect. UI motion, micro interactions, mobile Android, and it goes on like. So this is like uh, as bona fide core design pioneers. Pinterest combines core design with a waterfall flow to provide users with a uniquely smooth and seamless experience. So by giving each code a subtle shape when interacting with the mouse, Pinterest enhanced visibility and given the elements to perception of clickability. So um, I'm moving on to the next one, the current tabs color palette. So what is that? So current app is a parent board and corresponding aimed at promoting for good financial decisions. So um, the design have de defined the stereotype of finance and with bright colors, cool fonts, and unique backgrounds. So the next one is that, yeah, the next one is that, yeah, the Cognitos custom animation. So one is this left one is Cognitos custom animation. So the custom illustrations haven't just made the Cognito website stand out from the generic. They have also created a friendly and inviting environment for the users. So a fun illustration can give websites or mobile apps their own personality, making them more memorable. So this dynamism both captures users' attention and illustrates the brand offering at a glance. So you're basically by seeing this example, you've got an idea like, so like how the the UI design should impress the users to download your app or website, to open your website or something. So uh, this one, uh, the last one is that the Spotify app. So uh, anything, you will see, you can see the giving a few examples over here. So Spotify like uh, using different colors and different backgrounds over here. So the Spotify, like, it is powerful when uh, used intentionally. Color gradients are mainly used in the Spotify app to highlight a certain design element arises. Alongside both music collection, household brand Spotify has demonstrated effective use of color gradients that make the app even more fun to use. So the next one is examples. So the first one is uh, Disney Plus landing page. Yeah, like now we have the Disney Plus Hotstar, right? You, are, you can see the landing page over there. So uh, this is the result of that. What can we learn from the Disney Plus uh, thing, UX experience? What is the experience we get from that? So always consider a new way to divide information, even for UX designs that are based on established interaction patterns. So while you may not want to change a classic user experience too much, if that is innovative, easy to understand way, here they are given like Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, it's like, like it's very easy to go through that. And here we have the search for watch list. It's very convenient for user to go to a playlist. Hotstar, you may you may have seen that. So what can we like uh, the next one is that the QB rotating video. So what is that? It is like a very innovative. Sometimes an obvious solution is the best one, right? So for long time uh, running issues with interactive experience, such as the orientation of videos, the UX designers and users may easily reach the same conclusion about how to improve things. So in this case, the UX designer shouldn't overcomplicate or overthink things. They should uh, simply give users what they want. So the next one is that Apple compare items. Yeah, the first, uh, you may have seen the lens code work website also. I didn't add it here. So the lens code also, uh, we can uh, show our face and we can like, uh, we are that lenses there and we can see how it looks. So in, in 
experience there. So similarly, Apple has like Apple, you may have seen the many laptops over there, HP and all. We can compare like what are the features in this phone and what are the features in the other phone. So when we are buying very expensive items or something, we can compare it there. So this is the main uh, feature of designer like to make it the user. So for the now the next one is that the threadless ad item experience. Uh, we have many websites like Amazon, Flipkart, or something. But this one is that it's it. This website is uh, selling T-shirts all over the world. So this company has an irrelevant why. The reveals in creativity and shows the experience they have created to add an item. So we can see it here. If an user is uh, like adds an item to a cord, it shows like uh, like one item added to. Me. I'm seeing, I'm still hungry. It's like it's like some. You can. Like a UX, UX designer can like this. Show that like uh, when a user adds an item or when he adds more than three or four items, he can come to know the price at the end. So the user is very comfortable with like it will show the estimated fare here. So uh, how like he can come to know how many items he had, uh, he has added till now. So it is where it improves the user experience here. So the next one is that uh, everyone knows this and uh, even uh, Zoom a Zoom meeting is the uh, final example I'm giving for uh, UX uh, design. So uh, Google Meet is also a good example. So here we have this uh, new meeting and join and schedule and share screen, right? So here in this one, uh, it is very useful for user to start a new meeting immediately or join in someone or someone else meeting, right? So this is also a good UX, UX design. So I'm moving for types of UI. So there are like uh, many types of UI, but there are uh, three prevalent types of user interface. And the first one is that command line interface. And the second one is menu driven. And the third one is graphical user interface. So uh, just to instructions into the command line. So the computer is commanded to first go to the required file or directory. From there, a whole host of commands become available from retrieving files to running programs. So uh, I have an example. The MS-DOS windows you could have seen in your windows, right? So this is a good example for command line interface. And the next one is the Python. You you know, you everyone know, right? So Python is a good example for a command line interface. And finally, like Windows shell command. So we all have it in our windows. We can open any types of file here by searching in the toolbar. Or we can run any app, like any apps or something. We can uh, use this toolbar for that. Next one is that typical user interface. So this is the common interface used of till now. In our in our gaming PSP or something, this it is the common uh, interface we are using in the day to day world now. So the graphical interface we commonly call it as GUI. It is the type of interface with which the majority of people are most familiar. You interact with these interfaces by using a mouse, touchpad, or other peripheral to point and click on graphics. You could have seen. You, you have your phones with you, right? So you can see your icons and everything is now using graphical user interface. So I'm moving on to the next one, menu-driven interface. I've already told you, like, um, for the UX design example, I've told you Twiggy and Zomato. So it is it is made of this menu driven interface in ATM in our uh, in our podcast like like we have many of sports also a good example for menu driven like we we have uh, many list of things right so if uh, app or website is formed up it consists of many lists it is made of menu driven interface so uh, in Twiggy and Zomato you can easily search through the if if it is made of a menu driven interface. So commonly, uh, it provides you with a range of commands or options in the form of list or menu displayed in the full screen. So experience rules. I, I've completed types of UI. So I'm moving on to the user experience process and methodology. So uh, the first one is that user research. The second one is design. 
third one is wireframing and fourth one is for prototype and the fifth one is and the last is implementation and launch so you can see the diagram here it is like a cycle of process the first is user research then design wireframing prototype it repeats itself again and again so uh, so let me explain this process in just a minute. So, uh, when, uh, well, how can you do the user research? If you ask an experienced UX researcher, what is the best UX for your website, product, or service, most likely you will not get an answer. So, a UX researcher should always be mindful of differences in opinions and perceptions. So you have to take user interview, then survey for group discussion. We have to do a some competitor analysis. So the next one is our design. So the first step we have to do is research. We have to do is design. So start designing with user input. Like the, U, uh, the UX the designing is completely based on the user experience, right? Like uh, how it will be comfortable for the user. So first, uh, start a survey uh, and do a research and then go for designing. So the users may think like the appearance of a website or product when we talk about design. So they will describe it as pretty or not pretty. However, as a UX professional, you should be aware that the design is more than appearance. So Steve Jobs once said that design is not just what it looks like and design is how it works. So the UX design comprises UX elements from information architecture, visual design, interaction design, strategy to sitemaps. So this is the second step you have to do. And the third one is the wireframing. So what is wireframing? If you have an employed wireframing as a part of your process, you should probably start doing it. So a wireframe is a visual guide with the framework of your product. It allows you to define the information architecture, navigation design, and this is a third step. What you uh, you have to do is prototype. You you all have you know you all know what is prototype, right? When you are doing a project or something, this is the version of 1.0 of your website or product. It resembles the closest version of your uh, final outcome. So a prototype allows the UX researchers. To examine and identify any flaws, errors, or inconsistencies in all over design and experience. So the uh, the fifth step is here is uh, testing. So with prototypes, user testing can be conducted with users to validate the design and user experience. In some e-commerce companies, testing usually makes bulk of data of UX researches. It allows them to continuously improve the product. So the final step is here is uh, implementation and launch. After user testing, the validated prototype can finally be converted to actual product for UAT testing. That is testing before and after. So, UI uh, focuses on the app performance, while the UX focuses on the entire user journey. The user interface determines how the app will look like. Like, um, you, you, you understood by seeing the previous slides also. The UX uh, determines what problem it will solve, like how the app will be comfortable to the user, or how the website will be comfortable to the user. So uh, the UI revolves around visually directing the user about the app interface. Uh, when we uh, download a new app, right, you could have seen in the App Store or in the Play Store itself. When we download a new app, it will show like the directions with an arrow marker. Right? What are the features in the app? What are the things like what we have to do when we download it at first? So it is, the UI revolves around that. So what UI includes, I've already told you, right? This researching, testing, and developing and prototyping. So um, 
And last one is that UI, unlike UX, is limited to the screen. Like UI is all like it is a user interface. Like it, it determines the designs of a website or app. So it is only limited to the screen. So while the UI transcends beyond it and includes all interactions and touch points with the user. So I would like to ask Krishnan to continue the session. Thank you. That was a really awesome session. Thank you, Priyanka. You could stop there. Thank you, Krishna. Yeah, I will stop the meeting. Thank you. I hope you can see my screen clearly. Hello. Okay. Uh, hi, guys. I am Krishnan from CSC third year from SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Ramapuram. Uh, I hope you guys would have now got an idea about what is an UI, what is an UX, uh, how UI, UX are uh, you know different from each other, what are the tools required for UI, UX. I hope you guys would have got a, a clear idea about these things. Now let's focus on what are the tools you need to learn this UI and UX. For example, if you know um, a skill, it's just like learning a rules of the game. But these are all the tools. Once you start learning them and using them, these uh, this is the real game with which uh, you know you actually execute the program. So, one among the example, greatest of the example is Sketch. These are the tools with which you can create an actual prototype or an UI. These will uh, give you a canvas. Once the canvas is provided to you, it's like your own art. Okay. The main thing, like the main advantage with this is that you don't need programming to do a UI UX. All you need is a good knowledge in art, color palettes, how, you know, the contrast, like it exactly needs the uh, art part of you. Like if you are good at creative designs, creative visualization, this is a field for you. If you know apps like Sketch, this is just like giving you a palette, okay? Now we are just going to design the app. You are not going to care about the functionality at all. But here you need to focus on the flow of the program. That's all it needs. So and there is an app, uh, like there is an app called as Adobe XD, which is from Adobe. This is one of the most, you know, up and coming uh, softwares. Uh, people from Spotify and TikTok use this Adobe XD to create prototype for their softwares. So this gives an edge over other softwares. Sketch is also one of the important, uh, you know, softwares which uh, which is used. These are just like, you know, uh, like these are just use cases. If you like having, uh, you know, learning as many softwares as possible will boost your resume and you can have a very good shot while applying uh, companies. Uh, these are all the tools which are available. I'll be saying few more. Uh, the thing is, it depends on the company. Let's say uh, if you're going for Adobe XD, there are few companies who follow Adobe XD. But if you go for a few other startups, they might use Sketch software. And then there are few people who might use Figma, few people who might use Marvel. But the basic ideology between all these apps is so similar. It's just like learning a programming language. The basic, uh, you know, uh, the basic features are just going to be the same. You know, uh, the how it's getting operated. Only thing is that the interface inside these apps changes. Like if you know, you know, WordPress and then if you you know go and use some other app which is similar to WordPress for creating website it's going to be the same but you know the placements of uh, you know the modules just varies you just have to learn that that's all Canva Canva has a extreme community based service there if you want to create posters if you want to create a website if you want to create an app prototype everything is there in Canva Canva provides you with the wide variety of pre-installed or community-based uh, you know prototypes present inbuilt okay so that you can just take it edit those you know uh, 
change it to your own need and then you can present it that uh, like this is one of the best softwares uh, you know which is recently been trending in 2021 this is one of the most uh, visited websites uh, in the field of uh, mm, digital arts ui ux in the year of 2021 job opportunities for ui ux designing you may wonder like is it really a thing like i am not a developer if i just know how to sketch a website or how to sketch an app do i really get a job that if that's your question yes you will get you know let me uh, give you the statistics the exact numbers which i got you know this december 2020 uh, i started you know noting down the points how these design centric you know recruitments are going on usually uh, app developers used to get an average of 20k per month but now it's been drifted to 40k per month you know like there is a huge more than 100 percent increase there if you see the statistic it's one of the booming fields not just with opportunities but with the cost if because like every other company now has a good ui let's say there is zoom this let's say there is a geo meet whichever has a better ui people will prefer it right if you are using gmeet okay like why people use uh, you know gmeet when there is zoom like even though technically there are one or two advantage here and there but why people prefer gmeet over zoom is that gmeet has a good ui right so a ui can change your market value it can completely you know get more audience for you it can potentially increase your overall, uh, you know, uh, the growth for the particular app or a website that you are making. So people, uh, not uh, the people all over the world, you know, started working on this. Companies started hiring top companies like Apple, Coca-Cola, Ford, IBM, you know, Target, is, uh, Target and Walt Disney started hiring more than 20,000 people per month starting from the year 2020, December. This is one of the most upcoming field, which is easy. If you are a creative designer, creative field in you, like the creator in you needs to go out. This is one of the best field for you. Then if you see, people might ask like, there are developers there, then why do we need UI UX designers? Does you design, is it really a mainstream job? Like, or it's like a arts job where, you know, like we see, engineering jobs and art jobs right people tend to get paid more to engineering job than art job like we have a native comparison here but this breaks that you know before uh, 2017 2016 this used to be below the mainstream now it's you know the pro if you can clearly see the graph that you know the sustaining trajectory which is going more than mainstream like it's booming like a lot this is going to be a game changer here. Now, uh, now let's see uh, what exactly you know you need to become a UI UX designer. Okay, uh, let's say you are uh, now you got an interest in UI UX designer. You want to go for a job in UI UX designer. Now that I have explained what are all the technologies, like what are the tools available, how the job is booming, what exactly do you need? to be, you know, to get a job in this UAX designer. First, I would recommend is that a website, a portfolio or a resume, like a proper guided resume. Let me show you my work, okay? Let's say if I am a UAX designer, okay? If you are having a portfolio, okay? This will be a stamp of authority that you can, you know, give like, okay, I have done this, I have done that. Like it just shows your experience to them experience in a way in ui ux like if you see this website this website is also built with a ui ux tool along with javascript and html you know ui ux is a backbone for web development as well as app development now every company is going with a you know a creative design so that you know uh, people who code doesn't really uh, have you know it, it is not mandatory for them to have a creative knowledge okay so if you have a creative designer who just designs the website someone like a coder can come and then take the design and just code it exactly as whatever the prototype is 
you get my point right so it will be easy for both developer as well as the creative designer or the ua ux designers so have a portfolio mention all your works add your works skills your education your portfolio your links require links your instagram linkedin uh, github profile github profile is also one of the most important thing here get your pro github profile ready add all your projects there have a proper synchronous thing going on between these three your portfolio your linkedin as well as your github this will boost your resume like a lot so now that you are showcasing your work you need to have particular skills exactly like if you are uh, let's say you know adobe xd you need to have two to three projects which you've done in adobe xd which you know adds value to your resume if you you know have this then you can definitely get a internship once you land in a internship then you can easily get a job so this is how you have to you know if you want to take up a ui ux designing as your career this will be the trajectory for you like this will be the perfect trajectory for you so that you can be a good ui ux designer uh we will be providing uh, links for you uh the useful links for you so that you know um you can uh, take uh, you know the links to learn these tools uh, the links for all the courses which are available to take these courses we will be posting uh, the link for the entire ppt once all the presentations are over we will be comparing all the ppts together and then sending you the uh, and we will be sending you the link okay that's all for you ux designing thank you so much learning more about you and UX and a better example than me so uh, let's move on to the next domain that is android development so uh, uh krishnan will explain that priyanka um i hope now that you guys would have got an idea about what is a ui what is a ux how to build an ui ux now you have a design right now you need to give life to this this like having a better a good ui ux is just like you know ultron without uh, energy stone okay now this app development and web development are like the energy stones which we are like the infinity stones which we are going to give to this ui ux to bring it back to life okay so having a proper ui ux designing you know the designing skill and then having a good web development or an app development skills makes you one of the most you know uh, one of the most uh, you know the probability of you getting hired gets increased exponentially here like let's say if i am the recruiter if i see someone who can design as well as develop then i would be uh, like you would be give, getting a edge when compared to others who just know either to design or to develop so now that uh, you know you know how to design now it's time for you to develop for development there are two choices like either you can build a website or and you can you can develop an app i will be talking about how you can develop an app how to proceed your career with app development and then uh, mr arvind will be continuing on how to create a website you know to give uh, you know, to get the working of this ui ux let me present my screen okay now that it's here first of all what is android hopefully everyone uh, who is here knows what is an android and it is just an operating system right what you don't know is that it's a linux based once you take linux and decode it linux is an open source every open source software is a boom it's like the best part of it like there will be more contributors to it if there is any bug there will be n number of people working on it the entire global society is working on it to you know develop or optimize the android platform like it is open source so everyone is more more interested let's say why android i hope everyone would have known like android is this like let's not get into fight of android and ios now <laughs> it's really not a good time to start the fight here uh, as we are a developer students club we will be focusing on google based technology and uh, taking android it is uh, owned by google now even though it's open source google uh, rolls out the updates for it so that gives one of, like that is also one of the major edge to this 
it is global like if you see there are billions of users who are using android now if you are listening to this video lecture now there is a very high probability that you are using one of the google's or android's technology to watch it it would be either youtube or uh, or if you are using google chrome whatever it is even the browser or like even the operating system with which you see everything is google technology here so uh, that's why android the intel app integration is more here you know if you see the app integration with android it's very easy very convenient it as it is a open source and as a very large developer and community reach it is very uh, super simple for the android developer let's say if you are launching an app okay uh, before you know if you are using uh, uh, when you take you know 2008 2009 there won't be many beta developers for you now if you go to the play store becoming a beta developer for getting a beta developer for an app is hard because like if once any company plans to you know release their app everyone goes and registers we have such a wide amount of audience for this this will help you get more reach okay um there are few disadvantages also let's discuss them later first let's see the cons the cost of development is simple because um let's say if you have an android studio the android studio is free you don't have to pay for it whereas if you take ios you need to pay for you know getting an uh, testing studio or the virtual machine you have to pay for it but here we have a integrated uh, you know virtual machines present inside the android studio itself so that you can just you know run your program as you you can, you can test your program while you are writing the code so it becomes very easier so once you are into you know android there are two path you can choose again either you can use kotlin or flutter these two are the options with which you can currently create an android app now with a programming language with you know these are the full stack apps so let's first go with kotlin okay if you have a java experience okay this kotlin is so similar to java let's take uh, the data structures the syntax everything here you know the variable declaration uh, the null value errors you know the exceptions uh, exception and links everything is so similar if you know java then learning kotlin is going uh, kotlin is going to be very simple for you it's like super easy well if you take the pros and cons here here the pros it was as like it's easy to learn if you know already have a good knowledge of a data structure programming language and then this is consistency because like you will be writing everything from scratch okay like you have to uh, write a clean clear cut program like there won't be pre existing code like you can use templates but here but most probably you have a control over each and every variable here in kotlin it's like uh you can control the time complexity and space complexity of the program like you can literally control even 0.1 mb also in this program like this is super you know customizable uh super effective if you are going for you know from scratch optimizing it kotlin is one of the best and then one of the thing is like it's not too you know new language but it's somewhat relatively new but there are lot of you know developer community here this is launched kotlin is launched before flutter so there is a native support here uh you know even though it's it's not too strong but yeah we have some more native uh, you know support here but here you have to you know uh, th as these work uh, these work on uh, java virtual machine jvms this is comparatively slower you know why this is slower is that it's not slower for uh, while working it is slower while compilation so if you are having you know if you have coded in a uh, android uh, studio you would understand like first you have to build okay you are you have to build your gradle to execute it let's say if i have a code okay like if i have a python code if i just click f5 it will run right but here in app development you have to build the gradle first so you have to first build it and then you have to choose a virtual machine to run it okay like these are the two steps In the first step if you are using a kotlin for your development 
the compilation speed is slow like if i have a you know very big software if i you know give a, give start build that to even like a week before i created an app in kotlin it took me around 45 minutes for the you know the gradle to build so sometimes it happens uh, if you are using a kotlin then comes flutter flutter is completely new okay here they as i already told there will be three existing templates but you have to you know give uh, you know code for everything but here flutter it has a lot of drag and drop option let's say if you want to create a button you just have to go click buttons and then drag and drop it you will be getting a button and then in back end you can you know assign whatever things you want to you know whatever the functions which you want to call while you are clicking the button let's say if i click this button i want to go to previous slide if i you know just drag and drop a button name it as previous and then in action put call the function which goes to the previous function that's all so it's that simple and then the thing is it's so easy to use as i already told this runs on dart you know it's a google's programming language obviously google gives the complete support for it here you get a lot of documentation and support pre existing by you know the pre existing documentation given by google directly while launching itself and then um, you can see output in real time like just like that uh, you can see real life output in both you know flutter and kotlin but in flutter it's comparatively easy and faster you know if you click you know run build and then execute it you will get it easily uh here it's flutter is more expensive as it's new there are only very few amount of people who know flutter so if you want to build an app you know with flutter uh it kind it is somewhat expensive in compared to a kotlin so but still it's fine uh if you ask me like which one to choose flutter or kotlin if you know a programming language go for kotlin like if you know java especially go for kotlin it will be one of the best choices if you know you are completely new to this like completely new to this like i have no idea what to do with the app development go for flutter you can easily learn that there are a lot of documentation support videos the community is also big either ways both are supported by google so you can't really go wrong by choosing which one of these so career in app android app development if you see everyone now as you know there is predicted that every five uh, you know every one people among five is using an android device so it's not going to decrease you can create app at any period of time even all the new technologies which is coming like uh, you know machine learning uh, deep learning and uh, other parts it will support your app development it is going to boost this only the career in app development is not going to drop like ui ux uh, you know app development or web development the careers here won't drop drastically when compared to you know like the saturation point to be exact you know the you can clearly see the numbers here like it's booming up like booming up a lot because there is there is no end card here like there will be future apps like it's just the idea that matters you know if you have an idea you can build an app it's that easy that good if you are going for freelancing and others these two things like app development web development ui ux this is going to help you a lot because many companies and many startups are now going for freelancers to get their job done freelancing or internship so this will be one of your you know key support or else if you want to go with entrepreneurship also this will support you a lot because uh, once you have an clear idea what you are going to do you can you know start building softwares you know start build an app or build an website and sell to people this uh, is one of the you know booming fields with which you can um, go ahead we uh, if you want to learn kotlin or flutter go ahead to our youtube channel we will be posting the link in the description we recently conducted android study jams in our uh, developer students club it happened in december and january more than 150 to 200 people have completed this portal this is completely free we are not marketing anything for money here these portal are provided by the android the official uh, android team from google 
you can easily go there you know there are two paths like new to programming and then people who already have a programming knowledge you can choose whatever track you want to do you can complete it uh, there will be quizzes uh, there will be you know hands on experience where you can take the code run it you can build your own code like, it's super fun super easy to learn we will give you the link you can go and check it out it's it is very fun we will be giving uh, the youtube link also our uh, dscs youtube link where uh, we have done uh, you know a series of three events where first event we spoke about uh, basics of kotlin how to get into you know um, how to install android uh, android user interfaces uh, uh, the android studio how to get the vm how to you know set up the environment how to run the code the second one we talked about the version control devops etc the third one we spoke about uh, you know we took uh, various apps we called on called in one of uh, the best speakers who has you know who has done more than four to five projects we called him you know made him explain his project uh, explain the codes which he you know uh, which he has done Exp he explained it very clearly so you can watch all of those videos in our youtube you can check this portal link also um as i hope you guys now would have got a clear idea uh, about uh, what is going on in the field of ua ux uh, app development uh, etc arvind will continue with web development uh, even though all the upcoming fields are coming up these are going to be you know all those fields is going to support this to grow I hope uh, you guys would have, have an awesome future ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christian, for uh valuable information about android development and above flutter and all we have like we have got much uh, information about it so we'll move on to the next domain that is web development uh it will be presented by aravan he's from third year he's hey all this is aravan i'm currently in third year of my cse so i am the dsc leader of this campus and i was a x react developer intern at mac data so let's quickly jump on to the session what is web development? Web development is a professional skill where web developers develop and maintain websites that are hosted in the internet. Web developers are professionals who create websites or web applications. Nowadays, website has become a popular tool for uh, marketing. Starting from small scale industries to tech chains, most people use a uh, website as a business tool. Most businesses are run through website, like uh, small scale industries are now started making their own website and started selling their products. It is a tool for communicating information between the business partners, like buyers and sellers. You can list uh, general information in the website, like uh, your contact details or your product information. The websites are used as tool for sharing information with the customers. These are the agenda for today's session. Like uh, we will see what are the technical skills that are needed to be a web developer and roadmap in 2021. So types of web developers. There are three types of web developers: front end developer, back end developer, and full stack developer. A front-end developer is someone who implements the design using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These three are the main languages for front-end. Front-end developers work with the design and outlook of the website. If you head to any site like uh, Google homepage, you can see the work of the front-end developer. Front-end developers are also responsible for making their website responsive. Responsive means that uh, if you change the screen size, the contents in the website will be rearranged. They, the contents in the website will be scaled according to your screen size. 
web developer versus web designer. Web design is all about how the website looks. A web designer is a graphic artist who develops and styles objects that are displayed in the website. But web development is how the things get implemented. Web developer is responsible for implementing things. Web developer develops applications and the functionality of the website. These are some of the programming languages that are needed to become a front-end developer. We will see that in coming slide. Moving on to backend. Backend developer are responsible for server-side logic of the website. They integrate and work with the front-end developers. They develop APIs. APIs are uh, medium to talk to backend. APIs application programming interface. For example, if you are booking any flight in third party apps like Paytm or Amazon Pay, uh, the flight details are fetched from API and displayed on screen. So, API is the medium for front end to talk with back end. These APIs are maintained and updated by the back end developers. Coming next, we have full stack developers. Full stack developers are people who are skilled to work on front end and back end technologies. Every product needs a database to store data which are collected from the website. As a full stack developer, you should know at least one or two databases like SQL, MongoDB, etc. We should know how to interact with these databases. As a full stack developer, we should know how to have version control. People mostly call it as source control. It is a practice of tracking and managing the changes in the software code. We have to keep track of changes in the code to avoid conflict in production. Also, there will be more than one developer working on the same project. Version control helps to avoid co code conflict between the developers. Programming languages that are needed to become a full stack developer. Front end languages like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and any one framework, Angular, React, or Vue, and database of your choice, and back end languages of your choice. We will see that more in coming slides. Technical skills that are needed to become a front-end developer. As a front-end developer, it is mandatory to know these three languages, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML is hypertext markup language. It is the basic of web development, and it gives the skeleton of the web page. CSS is cascading style sheets. It is used to improve UI. It helps in providing various styles, colors, fonts, transition in the web page. It gives an improved look to the website. And finally, JavaScript. JavaScript gives functionality to the website. JavaScript provides an uh, interactive element that can engage the users for long time. For example, let's take a shopping website. We use filter to display drop products on the on our priority. These filter options are implemented using JavaScript. These are some of the programming languages that are needed to become a front-end developer. It is not mandatory to know all of these languages. It is always a developer's choice to use programming on language in their project. But I will suggest to go with a trend or framework which has more support and large co common forum. Like if you take Angular, React, and Vue, these three are frameworks. Angular is Angular uses TypeScript-based framework, and uh, React is developed and open sourced by Facebook. Vue is an upcoming uh, framework which has more users recently. So if you take in these three. React has more com uh, community support than other two. Also, React is easy to learn. Now we will move on to backend. As you can see in the picture, uh, most people cannot see the work of the backend developer. Most part of web development is done by the backend developer. The middle layer which can interact with front end and back end is API. As I said in the first slide, backend developers are responsible for storage, authentication, and security. They are also responsible for developing and maintaining APIs. These are the programming languages that are needed to become a backend developer. Again, it is completely uh, developer's choice to learn their own language. 
it is not mandatory to use all of these languages. Now moving on to full stack. As a full stack developer, you should know both front end and back end. You must have skills of both front end and back end. You must be able to work on whichever part your team needs. Uh, like if you're working in a project, there are front end developers already. You're joining as full stack developer. The team needs back end developer. So you have to work on back end part. Once website is ready, it is ready for production. After front end and back end developers develop the website, it is merged by the DevOps or version control team and it is ready to be released. Hosting. Once it is developed, it is hosted in various uh, hosting service platform. After hosting the website, it will be live and it will be accessible by the users who have internet. Next one is testing. After developing, it is always uh, preferred to do testing to avoid conflict in the code. While testing, if there is any bugs or errors, they all can be rectified during testing. Once product is error free, it is ready to be released. Roadmap in 2021, like these are the skills that you should have to become a web developer. Again, it is your choice to skip and learn languages of your own. You can learn whichever you feel easy. Tech stacks, uh, this is the buzzword like you will hear if you are into web development. These are just abbreviation of technologies combined together. Mean, mean is MongoDB, Express, Angular and Node.js. Mern is MongoDB, Express, React, and Node.js. Pern is PostgreSQL, Express, React, and Node.js. These are nothing but a database, a backend server, and a middleware, and an, and an framework combined together. LAMP stack is a really old one. Uh, people doesn't use it now, but they, it is also in trend. It is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So as you can see, the entry level web developer has a pay of 2.32 lakhs. If you have more experience, you can earn a lot. Like if you have experience up to five years, you can earn up to six lakhs per year. And if you have experience more than 10 years, you can earn more than 10 or 11 lakhs. So also, also you can do freelancing and uh, you can earn from that. So if you are into web development, you have a lot of ways to earn. So sources to learn web development. There are many tutorials in YouTube and Udemy, Free Code Camp, or everywhere. So if you go to YouTube and search the topic which you want to learn, you will get a lot of videos explained clearly by the open source web developers. So if you have any doubt, you can ask. OK, uh, thank you so much, Arvind, uh, for giving much info. We have got to know how to learn web development, uh, what is the job opportunity, and what will be the benefit and all. We already told us the resources and all. So now uh, you can ask your doubts to Arvind in the chat box, if any. So, uh, so OK. Now we'll move on to the next domain that is uh, AI and machine learning. It will be taught by uh, Prasad from third year. Hello, guys. Um, am I audible, Priyanka? Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm Prasad, uh, currently in third year from AIML, uh, SRM University, Ramapuram. And like I am the domain head of artificial intelligence, and my team members were Mithula, Bhavani, and Akshay. Yeah, well, no, I mean, like here nowadays, like a lot of people are saying, like artificial intelligence have like improved a lot. Uh, there is like buzzwords like everyone say like I just want to choose AI as a career. 
so let's get into it like i just want to share a lot of things that what i just learned from my first year and also from my high school to share to you so that you will be getting some clear idea okay well what is ai like i just don't want to like bore you with the simple definition but i just want to share that ai is like a computer program which used to uh, simulate a human intelligence uh in my own terms we can say like uh, developing an algorithm to solve a complex problem that most suits yeah let's get into it i just want to give some intro but it's kind of interest guys like uh, first i just want to like talk about some ai researchers uh, three people because of those people like it gets ai gets uh, into like a next level we can like that uh one of the people is yan likun i admire this kind of people like his damn uh, i mean like his work is like uh, in deep learning get into like uh, advancement of uh, uh, artificial intelligence because of his work uh, like we can able to uh, do a lot of stuff in computer vision too uh, actually he is like a chief ai uh, scientist at facebook uh, and he is known as a, like godfather of convolution neural network and he has also worked in ocr Uh, optical character recognition along with this people i just make a note of this one you can follow this uh, follow him in twitter or any uh, in a social media so, like and then yosha benjo yosha benjo is not working in a company he is like uh, working as a professor in university of montreal it's in canada if any of you guys like plan to do a master just apply for university of uh, uh, montreal because uh, you can have a direct interaction with the person who uh, make an impact in the world of ai because of their uh, work uh, yosha benjo published like a uh, three books and also like a uh, 500 plus publications around uh, and then uh, well yeah he got his turing award along with other members uh, yan likun and jofre hington uh, yes we now let to jofre hington a uh, jofre hington is a one who coined the term a uh, deep learning and his work uh, is mainly uh, of back propagation algorithm he received a turing award with his colleagues actually he is the one who guided yan likun uh, while yan likun was a postdoc research associate with the uh, jeff rankton in university of toronto along with this these two guys you, i hope like many people knows if you if you are following the tesla because uh, Anders Karpati is the one uh, chief uh, director of AI in Tesla and also auto pilot trainer and Andrew Ng. Yeah, if you are doing like uh, courses in uh, Coursera, uh, I mean especially in a uh, deep learning dot AI, he is the one a uh, founder of deep learning dot AI and he is have a passion about like uh, uh, bringing budding AI engineers because of his it spend a lot of time in educating the uh, peoples in AI. and he is like he is one who led uh, google brain but right now he is in the chief ai scientist at baidu along with ian goodfellow and many more people are there uh, you can check it out in in like uh, twitter you can follow them because like uh, get to know about these kind of people will like uh, helps to push yourself from your comfort zone because they are like uh, they are the one who gave a lot of uh, you know, i mean improvement in ai education aspect uh this session that what i am like uh, taking is like kind of uh, complete kind of road map i can say because like i am just giving a glimpse because ai is kind of vast domain and moreover keep in mind like this is a domain is kind of lifelong learners of course you can make a lot of money but keep in mind you have to uh, uh, know a lot of mathematical stuff and uh, python if you know python is more than enough i guess yeah but you have to be really, really a good developer in python mathematics knowledge that you want to uh, learn is like linear algebra of course if you are in computer domain if you are children then linear algebra is a one is a must in every uh, domain in computer science uh, where you will be solving equations even if you take algorithm to calculate space and uh, time complexity you will be using linear al- uh, algebra and differential calculus calculus where in uh, while calculate while training a neural network you use to calculate loss and accuracy a uh, differential calculus will be useful and coordinate transform and non non linear transform for like playing around with the images and linear logistic regression numerical analysis statistics and probabilities statistics and probability lies in common area between a data science and ai okay please uh, keep it mind uh, of course you will be using lot of uh, mathematical stuff uh, from data uh, statistics and it, it aligns with data science too 
I will be covering like uh, what are the things that you do to become a proper data scientist apart from AI engineer. Uh, if you take AI as a domain, like there are a lot of subdomains are there. At the end, you just have to make a thing automate. Okay, wherever a data is there, if you want to make it automate, you can do that. Uh, yeah, subdomains are uh, machine learning, deep learning, NLP, uh, computer vision, and reinforcement learning. I my specialization was like computer vision and deep learning and two interested in reinforcement learning reinforcement learning have a special uh, I, kind of appearance uh, we can say because uh, uh, other domains are kind of you will be playing around with uh, uh, data like uh, data if you have a text as an input uh, then it comes under NLP and uh, if you have image as an input it comes under computer vision uh, in reinforcement learning where you'll be like uh, actually training an agent if it does, uh, uh, I mean, like if it does a good and if it uh, if it achieves a target, you will be giving a reward or else it's a loss. Go around and again do it so that uh, it's kind of like if, if it does a good thing to uh, follow the target, you will be giving a reward. It's really nice thing. And like you have to learn a lot of algorithms for if you choose a reinforcement learning as a, your domain in under AI. And yeah let's come to tools and frameworks yeah if tools and frameworks are not there you have to like literally code for thousands of clients it needs a lot of time and computation power uh and like think about it like if uh, you just if you want to like uh just code for a single neuron like it will take a lot of times around like hundreds of hundreds of lines because you have to sum up the features and then add bias and weights over there and and then again back propagate it like you have to calculate uh uh, laws like dip, uh, you have to do an uh, uh, multivariate calculus like a differentiate of uh, variables yeah it took a lot of time to make it simpler we are using a tools and framework let's see like what are the tools and frameworks in machine learning and tensorflow pytorch are like a kind of like a top edge because like tensorflow is from a google brain and pytorch is from a facebook AI researcher and each and every top companies are having like their own research team to work on uh, uh, to advancement of AI for their uh, own purpose. Like if you take a Keras, it's a wrapper over a TensorFlow. Uh, it's for beginners. I, I would suggest if anyone is like who is a budding, uh, I mean beginners who want to get into machine learning to train a neural networks or train a model, I would suggest to first learn a Keras because Keras make it even simpler uh, than a TensorFlow. Uh, let's see like uh, what is the difference between TensorFlow and PyTorch. Uh, TensorFlow, if you take a mechanism like it's uh, it's a static building of computation graph. Uh, just don't get into what is computation graph. It's kind of like uh, if you, uh, it's a graph where the data will be stored at nodes. Okay, like during back propagation, those data will be uh, uh, like uh, calculated. Uh, I mean, like if you want to perform differential calculus, those data will be used. So TensorFlow is kind of like if you are a beginner, it's kind of you are learning a new language. It will feels like that. Where PyTorch on the other hand is like more like a Pythonica. And moreover, other uh, uh, other differences, like if it comes into a visualization, TensorFlow has a tensor board, okay? While uh, PyTorch have wisdom, which is not famous actually, but in TensorFlow, you can able to, it tensor, I mean, in TensorBoard, you can able to, I mean, visualize the data, text and audios and everything, and laws and accuracies of your trained model. Uh, and in, in on the other hand, uh, wisdom is not quite popular, and uh, uh, in wisdom you can able to uh, like visualize the hanging callbacks and managing the environment of course the graphs uh, that you are needed but in my opinion like a tensor board as like uh, where companies are uh, using a vast compared to wisdom because wisdom is not even known for many people so if you are like intermediate in machine learning yeah a fast AI. at the same time like a uh, uh, tensorflow and pytorch there is an, another thing where, where many developers are learning a fast dot AI. Uh, it was developed by uh, Jeffrey Howard. They are like uh, claiming that it's uh, fast AI is like a more powerful and uh, more efficient and e easier to code compared to TensorFlow and PyTorch. Apart from that, everything, uh, every other uh, tools and frameworks are similar. Uh, it was developed by their own company, like a Theano, Cafe, Apache, uh, Microsoft Cognitive Tools, uh, OpenCV is for computer vision and reinforcement learning. I already talked about like what is the reinforcement learning. The main uh, 
uh, tools or frameworks that you have to use is like my, from my suggestion and in many companies were using is like open AIG. Like it was developed by uh, Deep Minds, uh, one of the companies of Elon Musk. Yeah. And uh, other frameworks are there, but uh, open AIG is like a most widely used visualization tools. Uh, I see one matter if you are like a uh, data, if you already did some data uh, analyst job or plays around with the data in Kaggle, then you may be using like a, a Matplotlib C born a basic uh, data visualization tool. Uh, Tableau is for like a complex things like it's separate software and Microsoft Power BI where uh, Microsoft have their own uh, visualization tool. And uh, make a note of this like Plotlib bouquet and ggplot have a, a 3D visualization of uh, graph. Okay. These three things like makes your uh, visualization more into kind of a 3D. These, th uh, these tools will be used for a data and a data scientist because they have to know the uh, problem statement and have to learn more insights from the data. Libraries and tools. Uh, many uh, traditional machine learning algorithms were like uh, have a support of a scikit learn. And yeah, it is one of the main, uh, I mean, not a main, many people, many developers use a uh, Zykit learn for developing a traditional machine learning algorithms like NumPy and ZyPy and uh, ZyPy and Pandas. Uh, NumPy is for numerical calculations uh, while playing around with a matrix. Uh, in case of, in a matrix, you'll be like you'll be using in a computer vision where you want to perform data augmentation or manipulate the uh, uh, images uh, if there is any like uh, 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 kind of if you want to pre process the image, then you will use a uh, uh, NumPy array because it's it's used for numerical calculations. A scientific Python uh, for scientific calculations uh, and Pandas for data frame manipulation. NLP. NLP is another like a uh, subdomain of AI. Uh, NLTK, Spacey, and Jensen are popular uh, frameworks for NLTP uh, compared to others. NLTK has a wide community support compared to other two. I usually suggest to go with NLTK. Many developers also using NLTK only. I all I often I I what are the things that I am suggesting is the one where main com many companies are uh, using it. But it depends upon the startup. But as the same as at the same time, you should have like a, a kind of uh, having good habit of uh, interacting with other uh, sub tools also, other tools and frameworks also. You should be like uh, adaptable for that. Uh, I mean, frameworks too. There is a, not a much thing, like it's just a, a minor difference will be there. Once you get into the domain, once you are exploring it, you guys may uh, like uh, love what you're doing because at the end, it's very hard. Like while you are seeing, you have to like hard code it, you have to train the model, but you will be satisfied at the end while your model shows an output because like I usually can see artificial intelligence as a magic, like uh, a while. It, it, the thing which it does, it's automate, it satisfies many people. That's the thing, like many people have chosen uh, artificial intelligence. Though their domains are different, like uh, app development or web development, they used to learn machine learning. Did you see, if you saw machine learning engineer, like it's very rare, who passionate about it, like uh, mine, I won't choose many, uh, another domain because uh, app or UI, UX or web, anything I won't choose because I, I love what I'm doing, artificial intelligence. Under artificial intelligence, there are a lot of subdomains are there because uh, if you choose AI, you have to know the problem statement. There is a domain knowledge in, is important. If you are working, I will talk about later this one. Yeah, model deployment. Uh, you build a model, right? Then how the client will get to know about it? Developers can understand the code. How the client will be knowing about your what it did, like what is the output? For that, you have to deploy a model. You have to show a client, okay, like this works and this is the output I got. It. Like for that, you have to wrap your model and use as a uh, API, a fast blast, and then stream, uh, streamlight, and Django are the one used for creating APIs. A uh, Python have, I mean, PyTorch will having. Uh, you should use these kind of uh, uh, frameworks for creating API, but this is not the case in TensorFlow actually. TensorFlow, you are having a TensorFlow serving which will be used for production. That's the main advantage. Like if you are like uh, uh, want to get into, if you are a college student want to make a project, I will suggest you to get into a TensorFlow because like uh, it's very easy uh, compared to a PyTorch. PyTorch is for more into kind of uh, research work actually. 
uh, TensorFlow, they are, they are having a lot of uh, uh, other frameworks like a TensorFlow Lite, TensorFlow Hub, TensorFlow Extend for end-to-end -end machine learning project uh, compared to PyTorch. But in, in TensorFlow, like it was uh, kind of uh, in 1.0 TensorFlow version is drastically, uh, uh, I mean, how can I say, like it's not worth than PyTorch. And after that, they released the TensorFlow 2.0, which have a lot of facilities from PyTorch actually. Like they even extend, they even developed a TensorFlow folder, which are a dynamic uh, computational graph as that of a PyTorch. Yeah, and Swift for TensorFlow is also is there. I I suddenly got remember that thing. Like if you want to know about it, just make a note of it. Ideas for uh, model building. You may be like thinking like, uh, what is the tools? Like where I can code? Like what idea I have to choose? Like if you have your GPU facilities in your own machine, like if you can use your or uh, Jupyter Notebooks and PyCharm and Spider or Visual Studio Code, or else like if you want to, if you want a third party support for the GPU, Google is providing to Google Colab, IBM Data Platform, Amazon SageMaker, Gaggle is a very best platform to build your model because like it will be around like 37 hours for um, GPU and same for TPU, you can use it. There won't be any error. Any error. It's very user friendly. I will suggest you, if you are a beginner, use a Gaggle or Google Colab. Apart from that, if you can create your own student account in Amazon SageMaker and Microsoft Azure for accessing Azure notebooks. Yeah, this is like uh, like some some people that are from JavaScript background. They have to learn a Python. Uh, to avoid such kind of uh, because they love JavaScript, right? They want to. They won't easily. If some people are can't able to learn Python. Python. So for that, uh, Google have developed TensorFlow.js and MLFire and uh, other main frameworks. Brain.js, uh, Convnet, JS and Mind and DeepLearn.js or like popular popular uh, frameworks for JavaScript developers. If they want to develop model for the website, they can. They don't want to like uh, learn a Python and get into the stuff. So they can easily like uh, develop their own using a JavaScript. Yeah, I, I actually actually say like if you are choose like uh, artificial intelligence as a domain, like you have to be a lifelong learner. You have to, of course, like you can make a lot of money at the end. You have to passionate about what you are doing. You should be curious about like how can I implement, how can I make an things automate. For this thing, you have to be uh, updated each and every day because, like, it's a rapid development uh, domain. You have to know, like, uh, today if you take an article, like, more than 50 articles will be published. Okay, so you have to be like uh, kind of update each and every day. For that, uh, I suggest some of the blogs and articles. Yeah, you guys can make a note of it. A uh, medium gigs for gigs for contents. If you are like a new for NLP, you just want to know what are the technical terms. How NLP is. Uh, uh, like I have to learn, like what are the things, uh, technical terms that I have to learn. You can refer geeks for geeks and towards data science for clearing your doubts. Many people uh, from industries are writing their articles uh, to uh, to uh, to encourage new uh, beginners from uh, to get into the field to solve their queries. Like you can use uh, towards data science, machine learning, mastery. If you have any uh, like a code error in uh, while developing a model. You can use a stack overflow for getting it. Then, yeah, career opportunities. As I already said, like uh, artificial intelligence and data science have some kind of similarities uh, where most of the tools, AI engineers or data scientists have similar, but only thing is like uh, AI engineers are more into uh, solving algorithm, uh, developing their algorithm for solving real life problems, uh, while data scientists are more into like a mathematical, they should know. Um, to find it to like uh, find insights about the data and to visualize visualize them so data scientists should not uh, better visualization tools compared to artificial intelligence engineer data scientists should know visualization tools uh, and they have to be very good at stats and probabilities these are the different roles in a uh, company like let me take an example if you want to if uh, like a project is there a company given a project uh, If a company gave a project like uh, you got they you can't develop an end to end uh, model and deploy it in a cloud, there will be different kind of people will be there. They will be working in there. 
if you take a uh, first you have to collect the data right a data analyst will do that collect the data and pre-process and given to a data scientist uh, if a uh, ai engineer ai engineer should know the entire work process of how a model uh, is from training to the deployment he has to know whether he's doing or not he has to know the entire uh, end-to-end uh, workflow pipeline for creating a model and deploying it in the cloud Top companies that make a use of AI and recruiting for the same. Uh, you guys may have like a dream company like uh, Google, Facebook, a Apple, Microsoft. Those uh, companies are like uh, spending a lot of millions of dollars uh, to do a research in AI and to get a benefit from that, uh, like uh, integrating with their uh, software, uh, like uh, Apple. App, uh, Apple having a lot of research work is going out there. Ivan Goodfellow is a director, chief AI uh, scientist working in Apple, uh, Google Brain, uh, Facebook AI research, and Tesla is like uh, using uh, self driving cars. And yeah, uh, DeepMind, uh, I, I don't know how many of them are knowing like a drug discovery is like a recent uh, accomplishment where. Hello, am I audible? You're you're audible, Prashant. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like I got some call. Mm, yeah, okay. Uh, the they predicted the protein structures, uh, which were considered as one of the biggest uh, mm, accomplishment in a uh, drug discovery. Actually, applications of AI, wherever its data is there, you want to make it into automation. Then you can apply uh, artificial intelligence over there. If you take an healthcare, like I recently worked in pathologist detection. Uh, where uh, like you will be it's kind of a breast cancer detection uh, using computer vision uh, models like unit and mobile net exception net um, ssd like a lot of things are there for instance segmentation uh, you will be using a uh, many model you will be training a different model for each and a separate task uh, let me take a simple uh, uh, case study like uh, what I had worked is a pathologist detection. Uh, there will be logs will be there for that. Uh, I mean, the end result should be like, you have to visualize that logs, okay. For that, uh, you should first want to classify whether it's a, a benign or malignant, okay. And then you have to use instant segmentation to give a different color for benign, uh, I mean, benign and malignant. It should differentiate both. So that like uh, uh, some, uh, those who doesn't uh, from a background of, uh, uh, medical, they can able to understand, okay, this is a malign, this is a benign, uh, okay, like the, the uh, patient is having cancer. So, yeah. Uh, in uh, education, uh, like, uh, there are vast kind of applications are there, like uh, atten uh, attendance uh, uh, monitoring system and uh, student attention um, monitoring system, like, uh, while during the class, uh, AI will, like, uh, get the features of the face and it will detect whether the uh, student is a very active or not, those kind of very interesting guys once you get into the domain you will be like knowing a lot of things uh, and agriculture like you can able to guess like what agriculture example will be like predicting the crop yield like you can take a picture of the crop and uh, you can train train your model uh, for predicting how the uh, crop is good and what will be the productivity how the soils were good what crop i have to yield so those kind of applications are there in gaming. Like you can build your own uh, AI model. Like uh, I know, like most of, most people will be knowing about AlphaGo and uh, AlphaGo for like uh, it's like a reinforcement learning agent uh, developed uh, for playing uh, against the AlphaGo champion. It has won it. Uh, and then e-commerce. Uh, it, it's like uh, for uh, playing around with. Uh, banking details like whether I, I i just have to provide loan for it's simple use cases like whether i have to provide a loan for this person or not uh, like usually like a bank manager will be looking at all the details uh, whether you have a collateral or so those kind of AI will be taking care of that that are uh, like you can apply for a complex things once you like get into the domain this research internship is for like a first years i'm i i, I believe like many people are from first years uh, like once they completed the first year, they thought like I don't have much uh, research background. I mean, I don't know artificial intelligence, machine learning. How can I get into those kind of internships? They are providing it. Like uh, IIT Bombay and IIT Madras, like uh, many IITs and triple IITs, NITs are providing research internships. I I, I suggest you guys to like uh, take internships before your second years, because after second years, I have one more like uh, suggestion for you. 
to apply for an abroad research internship while if you guys plan for a masters uh, this is a root map okay you just have first year just get into different domain and then choose your domain if you choose ai as a domain start exploring uh, learn the basic things get those research internships if you are uh, going for uh, research i mean abroad these research internships that i said like uh, iit madras iit bombay uh, those will be used for applying for your uh, research internships in abroad they will, you should have minimum like kind of research background while you are applying for them those uh, the thing that i said about abroad internships are like a dad sn both for us and my tax for canada uh, this is a really cool thing like it will up, it will boost up your uh, getting a selection of uh, your master un masters if you are applying for university you you will be like most probably getting selected because you are already having uh, shown that you are interested in ai you did a research internship with like a professors from a, a different university most probably you are you are from good university you will be doing uh this is like a top artificial intelligence college for masters like uh, you may ask like uh, uh, mit is a good one but mit is a good for aerospace and harvard is good for business mba is okay a stanford is a very good for computer science you can check it out make a note of it uh, if you are applying for uh, masters yeah now salaries and roles and responsibilities like you can literally kind of earn uh, like how the money is I, i just it's kind of gift like you can earn a lot of money while if you are into a ai domain compared to other one um, average salary for a ai engineers is around like a 50 lakhs for a senior who have very much experience the roles and roles are simple like they have to know the entire uh, uh, machine learning pipelines from starting from data collection to build a complex algorithm to solve a business uh, to solve um, real life problems once uh, data scientists were different because they are more into a, like a business oriented they have to know tackle the problems uh, about how how should be improve the business if you take a netflix as an example like uh, it will automatically recommend a movie right it's how how that is possible like there comes a data big data engineer where they will collect a lot of data from the server and process it make uh, make only the process data to the data analyst from there uh, data scientist will be like doing the job finding uh, like uh, how to suggest the things kind of going over there yeah like these were like a kind, I, i got this data from classdoor like it's trustworthy uh, platform uh, it's more or these kind of salaries are inr if you are like uh, doing a work in abroad it may increase you can even make a uh, um, millions and billions of dollars if you are uh, like a beginner startup so yeah this is up to the thing like i guess like uh, i just covered every domain i guess if not like we will see you in a future event thank you this will be much useful for people who have chosen ai ml brands now they have got to know where sh they should start their career so i think you must be tired of listening to all this domains today so we have much more domains to explain we'll carry on with it tomorrow so uh next we'll be having uh, our q and a session soon we'll start with that yeah if you have any questions post it in the q and a panel or even if you post it in general it's completely fine each domain you know the domain people will be answering your question if you have any question post it i i am also now uh, 